Hey guys, I've been saving this one. This is a 2000 Honda GL1500 Valkyrie. This thing is a flat six cylinder 1500 cc engine. It currently has 27,264 miles on it. Runs great, but it has one little issue. We have a leaking fork seal. As you can see right here, we got oil running down the fork. Uh, it has stained the fork leg. It's been leaking for a while. The turn signals are held on with five millimeter headed Allen bolts back here. Six millimeter bolts with the five millimeter head. We're gonna take this off and just let it dangle right there. The next step is to loosen up the triple clamp on this side. We're going to loosen up the top of the fork while it's still in the bike. And this will save us some trouble later whenever it's not being held as well. We just want to crack that loose a little bit. Our next step is to take our calipers loose. We got the other caliper off. Now we're going to take the axle loose. That's the bolt that holds the front axle in. Our next step is to loosen up the pinch bolts. We'll start this bolt back in just so we can uh, do that. Drive the axle part of the way out. We'll pull those two out. Let's the fender just hang on to this fork. We're going to do these one at a time. So we're going to leave the fender mounted to this one because it's real pain to slide this fender out down past these mounts. And that's the fork leg out. Here's our fork leg and we have a fork vise here. And this is what we're going to use to hold our fork. We set a block underneath the bottom of our fork and that will allow us to slide the outer casing down. Like so. Now we're going to take the fork cap off. Here's our fork cap. We got to get this clip out and I do not have the tool here to pull this down. So we're going to cheat a little bit. We're going to stick our pliers in here like this and we're going to pull this down and pull that clip out. Now this is the scary part right here. Whenever that pops up, she has some spring pressure on her. We're going to pull this tube out. And now we are officially into the oily bits. There's our fork spring. 
that's what effectively holds the bike up. While we're here, we'll go ahead and take our dust seal out. We're just gonna very carefully put a screwdriver under there and pry it out. Under there, there's a snap ring. Right here. And it's got places to get a hold of it. There we go, that's out. Now we slide our damping rod out. I'm just going to work this damping rod and work the old oil out. To give you an idea how this thing works, we have the top end here, and this is attached to the fork cap. This bottom end down here, it's attached to the fork leg right inside here. So as this goes up and down, like so, this is forced to go up and down with it. Now when this is in the fork, it's full of oil. As the shaft moves up and down inside of it, it displaces oil, because it's full of oil and it forces it through a small hole and that slows it down. And that's what this is about. This is a, a damping rod and that's exactly what it does. And it pops apart just like that. This is the inner fork tube. And on this, there is a fork bushing right here. There's another one right here that goes into the bottom of this. It seats right inside of here. And they take the stiction or make the movement of the fork easier and smoother. Outside of that, we have a large washer that holds that in place. And then the fork seal itself. Then the snap ring we took out. And then back here we have the, the fork wiper. And all this has to go on in the right order. So we need to pry this apart. Like so. And get it to slide off of there. Like that. Now we want to inspect these. We want to look around them. See if I can get you to focus in here a little bit. You want to look around the outside of these and make sure they're, it's not wearing through anywhere. It's like a super slick coating, kind of like Teflon or something. And uh, we need to make sure that it hasn't worn through it. This one looks real good. So we're going to reuse this one. Now this one it's quite the opposite. We have to look at the inside of it. And we need to take and look around and see if there's anywhere that it's worn through the coating. And there really isn't anything where it's worn through. The outside doesn't matter because it goes into the fork leg. Then this fork slides to the center of it on the slick surface. So that's what we're looking at on this one. And it looks pretty good. So we will not replace that one either. We have our washer. Then we have the fork seal itself. There's our snap ring, and this is our wiper. So I'm going to clean this up with some contact cleaner, and I'll bring you back whenever I'm done. Hey, Doc. All right. We got some Honda Genuine fork seals here. Let's see if we can see the part number on these. 51490MV or MN0003. Uh, you can get these at uh, any Honda dealer. Crack us up with some fork oil here. Get my finger all fork oily, and then we're going to run this around here, and we're going to lube this seal so it goes in easier. You can kind of see what I'm doing here. I'm just making this wet with oil is essentially what I'm doing. And it's going to help it slide on easier, and it's going to prevent it from sticking as I put it on. We're going to do the same thing to the inside of the dust wiper. But we really don't need to do much to it. Now this is our inner fork tube once again. Remember, all this stuff has to go on in a very particular order. So we want to put our dust seal on first, or our wiper on first. We'll work it down past that ledge there. Alright, this bag, this bag serves double duty. 
the seals came in it, but we're also going to use it to put the seals on. We're going to pull this bag down and then we're going to wrap it around real tight. Like so. And then we're going to slide our fork seal onto the bag and then slide it down the fork leg. You want to make sure that the spring side right here is to the inside and the side with the letters and numbers on it go down. So make sure we get this going the right way. We'll slide that down and we'll slide it off the bag. The reason we do that is this is a sharp edge and we don't want our seal to get caught on there. Or it's going to leak pretty quick after we put it together. So we want to make sure that gets down there. This is our snap ring. We can just slide it over the tube. Our next up, after our seal, is our washer. After our washer goes our larger diameter fork bushing. And after it goes the one that actually goes around the shaft. So we'll slide this one here. Our outer fork tube, we'll slide it down over here, just like so. It goes together. Then this goes on. That goes in there. And then what we don't have here is a fork seal driver. So this might be a deal killer for now. All right, we got our fork seal in. We used some rather unorthodox methods that I didn't want to film because then there would be evidence of it. But uh, we got the fork seal in there. And we got our little snap ring in. So we got all that taken care of. Now we just got to slide this down and get it in there. The fork seals are done. Now we got to just put the rest of this back together. We'll slide this down, flip this around like this. And we'll take our damping rod, which is this thing. We're thinking it slid in and out just like it did before. Now flip it around because it goes in this way. All right, there's a cap that goes on here. This is uh, sits on the end of this damping rod, just like that. And it just sits on there and then the screw at the bottom holds it on. The reason that's important is if you slide this in here and then you go to back it out, you can lose this off of it and then you can't get your screw to line up. So that needs to be on there. We're gonna slide this in to the center part of the shaft or into the center tube, the inner tube. Just slide it all the way down. And then we're gonna stand this up. Without picking it up, there it went. We got a fine center, so it'll fall down in the hole. Now if we did all this right, our bolt that goes in the bottom here will go in. This is our bolt, and we're gonna replace this washer. A lot of times this does not happen, and I'll show you why it should. On this washer, I'm not sure you're going to be able to see it, but it is deformed. There's a rise right here. On the back side, you can see the depression where the screw was. That Allen headed bolt went on this side, and this side is towards the fork. And you can see how it's already been depressed. This ceiling washer sealed, but it's done. We need a new one. Put this on our long Allen bolt. I'm going to slide this in here and catch the bottom of that dampening rod. Put our ratchet on here. We're going to slide our axle in here just to hold this in place and hold it still. And then we're going to torque it to the factory torque specs. Click. We're going to put our first 500 cc's of oil in here. Just right down the gullet. Then we're going to work this rod in and out until it gets full of oil. You can feel it and it goes, thump. This part up here doesn't have oil yet. So we'll work it a few more times like that until it gets stiff all the way to the top. And that's what we're after. All right, now we're going to put our fork spring back in. I am intentionally putting this with a larger gaps at the bottom and the smaller ones at the top. The reason being is this part of the spring moves, this part's stationary. So if I put this down, there's less spring moving. Like I say, in a, in a Honda Valkyrie, 
it probably doesn't make a bit of difference. But that's the way I always do them. If I always do them right or always do them wrong, that's the way I always do them. Then we'll put our tube back in. We're going to run our damping rod up. Then we'll put our tube in here and hopefully we can catch that because I don't have the tool to pick it up with here. And we did catch it. We got our spring in and we got our tube in and through some bit unorthodox ways we got this clip back in. So now this is all loaded back like it was. The next step we're going to do is we're going to put our cap on here. This is our cap. This rod screws into here and that's what holds the top of the damping rod. I'll cut this out. Okay, and stake this to the proper torque spec. I always make everything the proper torque spec. Now our cat's back on, we need to put the rest of our oil in. Now it's all in, we're going to slide our fork tube up and engage the cap. We got our cap back on, we're just going to run this down, we're going to lightly tighten it in our vise, and then we'll finish tightening it back on the motorcycle after we get the triple tree tightened up on it. We're going to slide our fork back in here. We have to make sure it's behind uh, the guard on our fender. And then we're just going to slide it back up in here. Kind of like so. We need to make sure that we have our fork turned the right way so our fender will mount back up. Then we need to bring, get our fork to the right height up here. Before we just had the cap sticking up, so that's where we're going to put it back. And then we're going to tighten up one pinch bolt down here. And that will hold the thing in place. Then I'm going to tighten up the other pinch bolt. Down. These do not be super tight. Uh, look up the torque spec and make sure you get it right. And uh, I will tighten these to torque after we get done filming all this. All right, we're going to tighten up our fork cap. When we didn't fully tighten over there, it will not take much. Now we're going to tighten up our triple clamp bolt. Now these clamps are one place that you really want to pay attention to your torque specs. We're going to put the front wheel back on. And this is fairly self-explanatory here, so we're going to slide it up in here. Get it somewhere near where it needs to be. Straighten stuff up a little bit. We've got to get our speedometer drive back in and make sure that it's timed right. And it is. We're going to start our axle in just a little bit. There we go, the axle's in. Now we'll put the bolt back on the axle. Tighten it up. That'll do that. Now, we're not going to tighten our pinch bolts yet because we want to wait until we can bounce the forks up and down and kind of get everything to fall into place. We'll put our brake caliper back on. 
I spread the pads a little bit so it slides on much easier. Get our bolts started. We'll go ahead and tighten up our brake caliper. This is another thing that really torques much slower than you think it does. I would have to look up the torque spec and I will, and then I'll finish tightening these up. hose back in there. That does this side. Now I'm just going to go over the other side and tighten up that caliper. Put that caliper on and tighten it up. All right, we're going to put our turn signal back on. And like I say, this has got a bracket back here that centers this thing up. So. And we'll tighten up the outside one. Drink. That is back on. Now, we still have the windshield mounts and the wind deflector mount to put on. I won't bore you with that. But that's essentially rebuilding a fork on a Honda Valkyrie. Things to know is this side does not have the damping rod in it. It's actually easier to do. So we did the hard fork and it was the one that's leaking. Typically it's the one that leaks. And then uh, we got this tightened up. We've got to torque these down yet, put our windshield mounts back on. And this is pretty much a done deal at that point. So thanks for watching.